Hello and welcome to the world of Nair. I am Jay, your DM. If this is your first time listening, this is a serial show. So uh, if you're not really familiar with what's going on, feel free to go back a few episodes and catch up a little bit, especially if you like it. Um, if you are not a new listener, if you are a regular listener, please consider checking out our Patreon. It is patreon.com slash world of Nair. You can find some cool behind the scenes stuff on there, uh, as well as ways you can contribute and help the show um, as we continue to grow and, and uh, continue to cover hosting costs and website costs and all that fun stuff. Uh, so please consider that again as patreon.com slash world of Nair if you are a fan of the show. And uh, if you have any questions or you have any comments or fan art or anything you want to share with us, reach out to us. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're all over. Uh, we are at World of Nair. So you can find us on all your social media there. Uh, or you can also email us worldofnire at gmail.com. Without further ado, enjoy the story. Hello, everyone. This is Jay, your DM. Welcome to Nair. Uh, this is episode 60. Keeping it fresh, keeping it clean. Uh, this week, we have an amazing cast joining us. A lot of special guests. We're going to start off with... Hi, I'm Amy, playing Bijou, the high elf glamour bard. Hi, my name's Andrew. I'm playing Rivatevich Kolosevsky, the paladin hill dwarf. My name's Phil. I'm playing Harry, <clears throat> the fearball druid. Okay, I'm Aaron. I play Tatsu, the human samurai. All right, so uh, this week we are picking up where we left off. Uh, you guys were spending the night at the Rusty Spike, uh, kind of waiting for the rest of the Seventh Sons. Uh, so far, you have Quilly with you, uh, you have um, Perrin with you. Um, what's her face? The dwarf was uh has been hanging out there the whole time I'm gonna pull up her name um and so you're kind of just waiting for uh everyone else to make their way in since all the seven sons have been assembled um anything you guys want to do before while you're waiting or any conversations you want to have or anything you want to want to check out i'd like to ask Queely if um anyone has been able to get in contact yet with the moon lake elves um she says oh, that's a great question i was just actually um doing some some reconnaissance on this with my with my spies uh it turns out as far as we can tell they are still holed up in their tower uh no one's been able to get in there seems to be some sort of magical barrier around it that the halflings haven't been able to break through uh, mm -hmm. But we have not been able to receive any word or send any word back. So as far as we know, uh, the uh, elves are still holed up and safe, uh, but we've not had any confirmation yet. Thank you. Any news from Soft Hill? Well, uh, as you probably know, there are certain hills in Soft Hill that have fallen under control i believe it's only two out of the five though i think it's pretty most of the uh, especially the the capital where your brother lives they've been able to hold off most of the invasion uh since there's really only one entryway to it any word from my brother <laughs> oh yes <laughs> my <he's>... brother <laughs> <laughs> your brother my brother <laughs> he's been leading the capital there and and trying his best to, to keep the the siege from destroying the country and you know but uh he is he, they they are able to sneak some parties out now and again um through some of their tunnel networks that the halflings have not discovered yet 
Are you thinking of having him join us? You gonna go grab him? We're waiting on people. Is is he here? Is or is he still back at Soft Hill, or is he on his way? He should be on his way. We did send out a message to everyone to assemble the Seven Sons here. So, uh, as far as I know, I haven't heard anything like that. He hasn't isn't coming. So I'm assuming he'll be here. Is um so question? I can't remember. Did we hand off the little badges, the little like beep beep badges, to uh, anybody else besides our party and a couple of folks? Like who 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 all has those? Well, shouldn't they all the seven sons? All the have seven them? sons. All the seven sons. Yeah. And Dirk. Okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, we didn't. We didn't. RP Perrin getting one, but like if we want to just kind of say you guys hand him one off, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. Here you go, Perrin. <laughs> um, Tatsu turns to Dirk and asks, "Do you have a rope?" I could borrow slash have a rope. I'm. I can check me shed. There might be something back there. That would uh, be nice. It's just a hassle to go into town. What what with us being hunted and all that. I don't recall seeing a rope, but uh, perhaps if I don't have one lying around, I can get Grog to pick one up. Okay, that sounds did, fair. Did you have a specific length you were looking for? Standard. Like a bird. Standard. Well, you know, there's a lot of different uses for a rope. I guess, what do you think, like six feet long? A little longer than that. Seven feet. All right, I'll tell Grog. No, Grom. how about like 20? 20 feet. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll tell Grog. 20 feet of rope. I mean, a six-foot rope is silly because then you could tie it and then you're down like two feet depending on what you're tying it to. Well, you see, we don't we don't use a whole lot of rope here at the except for when we're I guess putting on additions and but this doesn't have to be very long because it's not a very big tavern. No, okay. at least it didn't used to be. I guess we're well, kind of growing now. We're we're getting we're getting bigger. <laughs> Twenty feet would be just great. Twenty feet. All right, I'll tell Greg Grog 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 Greg Grog Greg. That's his full name. <laughs> Greg Grog Grog. Yeah. Greg Grog. <laughs> <laughs> Grig, grog, we actually grog. call him by his last name. His <laughs> name is Grig Grog Grug Gruck. <laughs> oh, I thought I could have sworn Gruck was short for Gruckery. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's what we call him for for his nickname. We call Grickery, him Gruckery when we're <laughs> only when he's in serious trouble. Gruckery, yeah, Grig Gruck Gruckery. <laughs> so an accident on the floor now. again. <laughs> He's actually been pretty good about that lately. No, uh, no, se- no serious accidents. Nice. And we did teach him how to use a mop, so he does clean up after himself if it, uh, <laughs> there is a problem. <laughs> well done, well done, Grek. Grek. Thanks, Grek. Mm, Grek. <laughs> See you later, Grek. Twenty feet, Grek. Mm, Twenty feet, Grek. Yep. And he walks out the door. <laughs> I like I like Grook. Dirk runs after him and says, Grook, wait, I didn't give you any money. You can't take the rope for free. <laughs> and you see Dirk kind of chase him down with his hand, uh, his purse waving in the air. Hope Grook's not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you guys are, are thinking about or, or want to do? Not at the moment. All right. Well, uh, you do have uh, Byung Ho arrives kind of early afternoon while Gruck is out on his shopping trip. And he pops up through the. Uh, I don't believe you guys told Byung Ho about the trees, right? He can't travel by himself. I think the halfling girl is the only one who can travel by herself, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, Byung Ho comes in, he gives a little secret knock at the door, uh, and another one of, of Dirk's cousins, who's a little bit more on the on the half orc side than the full orc side, opens the door and lets him in. And uh, he kind of greets everyone, gives a little bow, and says, Oh, it's nice to see all of you again. It's been it's been quite a while. 
Uh, I heard that you found the last son. Yes, we did. We went to Rootdale and retrieved Perrin. Is Perrin in the room? Uh, he's sleeping in a little bit. Oh. Like, um, uh, it was a bit of a journey, so he's he's still sleeping, but you'll meet him soon enough. Very well. Well, do we have any ideas about uh, our next plan of attack? Um, let's wait till everyone gets here. I think it's something that the seven of you need to... Let them work it out. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. Just hear Jay talk to himself. It's, it's um, you know, pro prophecy says that, you know, the seven of you, you got this. We're, we're just here for emotional support. <laughs> is, is Quilly here? Yes. Oh. Yes, she is. Is she... I, I'll, I'm going to go talk to her and maybe yeah. see how she's doing. I haven't seen her in a while either. It's, mm -hmm. uh, and you see a little, like, kind of flower sticking out of his pocket. He's, like, nervously. Oh, that's cute. Well, BG's going to say, um, well, she has already uh, come down and chatted a little bit earlier today, so I'm, I'm sure she's up. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, okay, well, I'm going to go talk to her and... and Good luck down here, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm going to wave um, my hand like discreetly, like when he goes like past me over mm. the flower to make it smell extra strong, like extra fragrant. Okay. Um, cool. A couple hours later, you hear another secret knock at the door. And uh, in comes Jaron. And are you guys hanging out kind of in the lobby area, I guess? like the, mm -hmm. the I'm actually, area? I'm going for a walk. It's late afternoon, right? Yeah. I, I don't like being pent up indoors. You can continue. I'm just, I'm going for a walk for the time being. Tats is right. going to go too. Are you, Sneak. okay. Just Where are you recon. walking? Just on like, I don't know. Where do you want to go, Harry? You're choosing. <clears throat> um, I am going to do disguise self. As a very tall halfling, uh, halfling, I don't know what I want to mix it with. A horse? I guess a he, oh, a centaur. A centaur halfling. Okay. <laughs> Actually, make it a goat, because it's a halfling. Are, are centaurs, are, are they in this world? Yeah. Really? Didn't you guys run into one? Yeah, we did. Did we? Yeah, uh, I, th I think with disguise self, it has to have the same like limb set up as this, you. This is kind of crazy. That would be extra. Yeah, that would be too much. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I, I'll just be uh, uh, a human. Look, it still be like a goat, and then you'd be like a <laughs> like a fawn. Like, I, yeah, <laughs> like a fawn. <laughs> Tatsuo has her outfit that she bought. What is that fancy town called? Iron Ironglass. Yes, that she bought there. Um, it's pretty normal looking compared to, um, like walking around with a freaky fawn or Tatsuo. And then, yeah, so she'll do that, and then still have her cloak, I guess, to hide her bald head, um, <laughs> and her sneaky boots just in case. Okay. Cool. So you guys are just going for a stroll. Yeah. All right. Uh, cool. So Jaron comes in. He kind of knocks at the does a secret knock. He gets let in, and he sees uh, Bijou and Reeve waiting in the tavern. He says, "Oh, my brother, <laughs> brother!" <laughs> and he go over and give him uh, a good like slap, like a hearty slap on the the chest plate. Is he wearing? He's wearing armor, right? Yeah. He's okay. He goes. Oh, <laughs> and then I go in for a big hug and squeeze him really good. Like, just squeeze him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm fine. <laughs> Wasn't that a good joke? Oh, it was great. Oh. I've been hanging around with Admas more. He is, he is wonderful at this type of humor. <laughs> Speaking of, and Admas comes in kind of right after him and uh, comes right up and punches Reeve right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, 
I I look at him like really angrily. That's a hit. Oh, it hit. Uh, uh, how much? <laughs> how much damage? Oh, you take uh, five bludgeoning damage. <laughs> okay. I look. Uh, is my nose bleeding at all? Like any? Uh, roll it? a constitution check. Oh, okay. So, uh, Re, uh, uh, Jaran is is cracking up. He's like hunched over, laughing so hard. <laughs> okay. I rolled like a nineteen. No, twenty. All right. Twenty. You you can. Keep you I, I do that and I look really angrily and uh at him and then I kind of smile and I go ho 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 and I reach around and just like slap him across the head. Um He's a, what general. happened to your beard, little man? Does a uh does a eighteen hit? Yeah. <laughs> um I don't know, let's see. Yeah, but he's wearing a helmet. Um, oh, okay. So you take two more blood <laughs> <Okay. laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I just kind of shake my hand off, and I'm go. Oh, it's good to see you too. What happened to your What happened to your face there, little man? Uh, my my smile goes away, and I just say, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. And then I kind of look away, look down in shame. I. I <laughs> Gotta get back into the accent. Crikey. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really like that haircut there. How'd you you got a barber here in Prime that does that? Oh, uh Can I go and say give me the reeve? Not not exactly, but uh I mean I could help you out if you would like. Oh, absolutely. Okay, I'll pull I out definitely my, won't I'll pull out what my What do you call hat. it with its it's nice and short up in the front <laughs> so you can get down to business and then you got a real party going on in the back. Yeah, it's uh, it's just called uh, the Vatayevich, you know, it's new, new style around here. Um, here, I'll help you. And I take um, I take my axe and I start sh- <laughs> like I pull his head back and I start shaving his 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 little thing right here. Roll a dexterity check. Okay, dexterity. <laughs> Twenty one. You could just use a torch. I don't have one. <laughs> Oh. I don't want a searing smite. I don't want a branding smite this guy. Come on, man. I'm not talking about the chin. I don't want. To, I don't want to lose this beauty. I'm talking about the haircut. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Right, right, right. Well, is he missing any hairs here, or did, or did I already shave it off a little bit? Uh, he probably would have. Well, let's see. Let's have him roll. Oh, yeah, he. You got a little. You got a little notch. <laughs> okay. Oh, and that kid. That's easy. And I just kind of, just like, kind of like just. Sheared off with the sharp, sharp part of my axe. Oh, this is good fun. Oh. <laughs> oh. What about you, Jaron? You want one of these Javakeviches? <laughs> what did you call it? Javakevich. That's what I said. Jaron's like, oh, uh, no, I don't. I don't think that would be a good look for me. All right. Well, let me know if you like it later. It might warm on you. Oh, all right. This really uh, cheered me up because I just thought I was ugly, but now. Having the approval of a another another uh, dwarf really really just got me got me it lifted my spirits. Tatsu and Harry, what are you guys doing? Um, just kind of wandering about the outskirts of town, just kind of taking mental note of how many halflings I actually see. Um, but I, I really don't like the vampires, and I don't trust them, and I don't want to happen to walk by them. Mm-hmm. Because I forgot to mention them, and you just had me wander over there. Uh, <laughs> you see a lot of halflings. In fact, you actually uh, walk down the street, and you notice that there's kind of like a a bunch of people in line, um, and like the tr- the kind of traffic on the the street has has stopped, um, and there's all these people in line on the the pathway right in front of you. Uh, I'd like to stop the fourth or maybe fifth person in line. What do they look like? Um, it's a it's a dirty, dirty dwarf. Yeah, I'd like to uh, ask uh, that dwarf, uh, hey dwarf. there, fella. Um, what what are you what are you in line for? So, what did you call me? Did you call me a dwarf? No, I said hey there, fella. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, the back of the line's back there, man. You you gotta Whoa. you gotta go to the back what's, of the line. We've all been waiting the, here for a while. 
What are you waiting for? Paper checks. Oh, that's right. Okay, let me go ahead and hop in line. I'm yeah, going to walk the away. Back of the line is way back there. All right. See you, man. Yeah. I want nothing to do with that. <laughs> I don't have my paperwork. No, yeah, no one has paperwork. Um, is there like an alleyway so maybe we could like get on the roof instead to just avoid being seen like a quiet alley where we could climb? I, yeah, there's if lots not, of alleys. Okay. So we If it's <laughs> Is that what It's not dark out though. It's, it's if it's daylight, they're going to see you climbing up there. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so we'll just... I'm fine with walking. Yeah, walk, walk in the opposite direction of that paper check. All right, you're walking around. Is there anything specific you guys are looking for or trying to do? Just looking just keep, at the halflings, ahead. just seeing how many there are, kind of like taking notes of like what their weapons look like, that kind of thing. There's a lot. You see at least two on every block. Like they seem to be working in pairs. Um as guards, but then you also notice from time to time there will be like a a group of them um, kind of marching throughout and maybe they're like relieving other guards or something like that, but there's a very heavy presence in the town of them. Okay. So I guess we just do that until it gets like dusky time, dark time. Okay. Um, let's go back to the tavern. We have, uh, Roman comes down from her room and at the same time from the porch kind of on the outside, we have, uh, bell bricks coming in from the tree. Great. And they kind of actually come into the tavern at the same exact time and they give each other like a a once over eyes up and down uh and they both of you both of them look at uh bijou and say do you know this person what who is what's going on who? oh yes um bell bricks meet roman you are both seven sons they kind of give each other another eye up and down and, and nod and Belbrix looks a little bit more like a little bit more uh, wary, but Roman mm -hmm. just kind of gives her a, a once over and then she turns and goes and pours herself a, a tankard of ale from behind the bar. I'm going to whisper to Belbrix, you're going to love Roman. She's super cool. She's a hunter, fighter. She uh, raises bats. She's really cool. We got to travel with her for a while. I think you'll like her. Oh, that sounds really... Well, uh, I actually did leave my my dog at home. I uh, figured I could go, always go back and pop over and get him if I needed. But yeah. I, I like anyone who works with animals, as you probably guessed. Yeah, you uh, should. Well, well, come on over. So I'm going to um, walk Bellbricks over to Roman and... I'm going to say to Roman, um, Belbrix was just asking me about uh, your experience with animals and training bats. Do you want to talk to her about that? Roman kind of gives you a glare and says, speaking of bats, <laughs> whatever happened to oh. Stinky, Winky, Blinky and... And nod. Blitzen? They died valiantly in the jaws of a bullet. Uh, all four of them? No, died. one got away. <laughs> <laughs> which, one was, which one got away was it? The derpy one, I don't derpy. remember. <laughs> Is that nod? <laughs> Blinky? Because <laughs> he had I eyes like this, what, that's right. He, had, he, had he was my favorite one. What happened to the last bat? Oh. It's, I don't either. I don't remember. I, what I remember left he, him at Byung Ho's. Village. Yeah, like he came with us for a little bit. Oh. And then... Yeah, um, I think Byung Ho uh, would know where your, your fourth bat is. I did see him walking around the hallways upstairs. I'll have to touch base with him. Yeah, uh, maybe just give him a little time. He'll be down soon, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so, uh, 
Belbrix turns to Rome and says, that's really cool with bats. I mostly just have my, my dog and then, um, well, Mr. Harry gave me a tiger. That's been fun. Uh, but it's, it eats a lot. It eats a lot of food and it's a little bit hard to keep up with sometimes, but she's a big girl. You're not there. I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> this is a good tiger. For the record. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, cool. So you guys see actually um, Quilly comes downstairs. Um, she looks a little bit. It, it's kind of hard to tell like expressions from the wood elves as much. They kind of have very strong poker faces. Um, but she comes down and sur- surveys the tavern and says, is, uh, is Harry here? Uh, he stepped out for some fresh air. I'm sure he'll be back at his leisure, as usual. Okay. Um, if you see the human coming around asking about me, um, I am going to go and trance. So please don't tell him <laughs> where I am. Did they have Your a thing? secret is safe with me. <laughs> Thank you. And she kind of goes off to the the porch area where the tree is. Mm. That's my spot. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then uh, Perrin and Byung Ho come downstairs, and they're they're just chatting up a storm. They seem to be getting off real well. Um, And uh, Perrin's like, "Yeah," and I and then like I just. I, I somehow escaped the flames. I don't know. Like I've I've never really. That's the first time I've seen a dragon. And Bianca's like, wow, yeah, I just saw one for the first time recently too. What was it? Like a white one? No, it was red. It was really big, dude. It was so big. I'm like, oh wow, that's really cool. And they're kind of like chatting it up. And Bijou or um, Reeve, is there anyone you guys want to talk to here now that kind of everyone's starting to assemble? Hmm. I mean, I kind of just want to speak to everybody at once, really. I don't know if it's really a... Like, wait till everyone kind of comes back, I guess. Yeah, I just I just feel like there's nothing really for me to say to anybody individually. Okay. I mean, unless you all can right. think of anything um, to beat you. Yeah, so once all seven of them are... uh. Here, I'm going to try to discreetly um, kind of go to the porch mm-hmm. without Byung Ho noticing. Just to ask Quili, um, hey, are you ready? I think everyone's. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was. <laughs> I thought I told you I was trancing out here. I know. Um, but all, all six, six of the others are ready. Okay. All right. She comes in after straightening out her outfit and making sure her hair looks good. Mm-hmm. Did Harry come yet? Is he or is he still out? Out. Oh, um, he's he's still out, but he'll he'll be in at some point. Um, okay. But oh, I thought that was a gen- I'm so sorry. I thought that was a general question. But um, I think we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna kind of like get everybody's attention. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the seven sons must are now united, and now the next thing uh, should be the easy part. Time to save the world. <laughs> um, At this think, point, Dirk has come back, and he's kind of going around like bothering people for like, "You sure you don't want to drink? Can I can I get you some food, or at least what?" And like, yeah, mm-hmm. circling around while you're talking. Yeah. Um. So I think everyone should. First, uh, introduce yourselves and give us a brief um, rundown of the resistance efforts in your area and then what needs you have and what ideas you have for getting this gray army uh, out of our business. So, um, Jaron, would you like to start? Jaron stands up and uh, you hear a, a voice from the from the group saying, "Come on, man, stand on the chair. No one can see you." He kind of nods and stands up on the chair. Can I, can I identify <laughs> who who was saying that? 
Oh, it was definitely Obelis. All right, kick him in the shin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was wearing shin guards, so... <laughs> You've broken your prepared. toe. You take one <laughs> bludgeoning damage. <laughs> okay. Hold on, let me. Let me. <laughs> uh, Jaron st- stands up and says, Greetings, everyone. My name is, for those who don't know, my name is Jaron Kolosevsky. I'm Reeve's brother. Uh, or I guess I should say Reeve is my brother. <laughs> and. <laughs> Because, you know, I'm the oldest, so that makes me more important. Uh, I lead Soft Hill. Uh, mostly I lead the capital city, the capital hill, but uh, I have some dealings with uh, the country as a whole as well. And uh, I read lately I've uh, been working with my country to try and stave off the the halfling invasion. Um and been working on and off with uh, Bijou and and their spies to get some more intel and, and spread information as much as we can. But it's been a little bit difficult to get in and out of the country. It was a hydron. Hi, hydron. Um, uh, then Admis, not to be outdone, stands up. Good eye, everyone. Admis Red Grip here. Uh, from the better half of the dwarves in the north. And uh, just found out recently that I am, in fact, a seventh son. And I am, in fact, descendant of the gods. And uh, he kind of pauses for dramatic effect. But no one really is that impressed because they're all also seven sons. Yeah, and like under my breath, I'm like, but what old descent? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, so I, I, I'm from the north, as I said. My uncle runs the country there. And uh, since I found out, I've been working hard with him to... Uh, but they're, they're, they're actually quite fortified, quite protected. Not a lot of issues with the siege there, unlike our southern brethren, if you know what I mean. Uh, so I've been ha- helping out with uh, down in the south, leading some some attack squads to kind of make attacks on the the siege when possible and get away before anyone can touch us. It's been great, but it's very hot down here. I'd like to take one moment to mention uh, this beautiful hairstyle, courtesy of the Kaluskafizis, and uh, it's very wonderful in the summer months. Keeps the neck nice and cool, keeps the sunburn away, but uh, not too hot, not too much sweat dripping down from the forehead, so... Uh, if anyone wants, I can definitely help out with the Koloskafev haircut. <laughs> Looking great, Admus. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. I like Reeves just shake, shaking his head between rubbing his toe. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Bell Bricks. Bell Bricks stands up and she says, Hello, everyone. I'm Bell Bricks. Um, also just recently found out that uh, I'm a seventh, I guess a son, a seventh son. It feels weird saying I'm a son. I don't know. Uh, but uh, let's see. I really like animals. Um, <laughs> I like to paint. Um, <laughs> so cute. I, I'm not really good at surfing, but I've, I try, I've tried a few times. Um, it's kind of a, a big thing where I'm from, but I like to, I prefer to watch um not not participate as much. And, hey, Bell uh, Bricks, yeah. how, how has your country been? Have have you seen any of the um, the enemy armies at at your island or country? I think you guys probably know. Uh, we've been pretty tough on outsiders for a while now. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's true. So I think we were pretty much set up for. Not having a lot of issues here. Um, we did have a couple boats try and come over, uh, but we already knew about all the clouds and, and everything from you guys, and so we were able to protect ourselves pretty well. Okay. Roman? Roman stands up. 
I'm Roman. From the gnomes. Uh, if we're we're not doing so hot down there. And she sits down. Could could you elaborate? Uh yeah, we got hit by the the second wave of the rain pretty hard. Um and then we didn't have as much to fortify as some of these other countries that are not segregated to a specific part of the world and not allowed to leave and trade. So we didn't have as much protective protection and gear and uh, the country is definitely overrun with the halflings now. Um, last I heard, our royalty was uh, in hiding. Maybe I, I heard that they got on a boat but I think it's pretty much taken over by the halflings. So I think our first priority would be to rescue who's left and get them to a safe place. Potentially, uh, maybe since it's been so safe, um, they could live with Belbrix's people. Pelbrix kind of nods and says, "Yeah, that sounds cool to us. If they're if they're cool folks, you know, we don't want not cool folks coming. But cool folks are cool. <laughs> Seems legit. Yeah, sounds sounds like a sounds like a good acceptance plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <clears throat> Byung Ho. Byung Ho stands up and says, "Hello, everyone. My name is Byung Ho Kane." Uh, I'm from Eastwood. Uh, I don't know. We 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 also were able to avoid the yellow rain thanks to um, our friends here who told us about it. Um, my people were already very small, but we were in a very secluded area in a almost a tundra. Um, so we actually have not had very many run-ins with the halflings yet, um, but. We are having issues with uh, food and um, demons where we are, as I think you all already knew about. Mm. Yes. And then uh, Perrin stands up and says, Hey, I'm Perrin. Uh, just met Byung-ho. He's a pretty cool dude. Uh I'm uh I also just found out that I'm one of you guys, which is pretty cool. Um I've spent the last six years in Rootdale. I don't all everyone at the table kind of like gasps. Yeah, I was in the Dragon Army. We landed on the island and not very many of us survived, you know. But uh me and a, a group of friends, we were able to kind of find some shelter and and forage and and hunt and mostly stay out of the way of of the dragons and all their weird dragon offspring things i i don't know um but that's where i've been for a while so honestly this whole yellow rain thing and and the halflings like i kind of had to get caught up to speed on all this i didn't even know it was happening but um definitely down to help and down to down to party you know like uh i'm, I'm i want to save nair and i want to help out any way i can Right. That leaves Quilly. Quilly kind of stands up and says, yes, I'm Quilly from the Wood Elves. Uh, I believe I met most of you, uh, except for Perrin. It's very nice to to finally meet you. Well, no, we did meet, I guess. Take back everything I just said. Uh, no, um, I am. I've helped Bijou with uh, some of the with providing some spies and uh, rangers to find out information and, and spread it. Um, I've also been helping our country in the uh, Westwood to arm the the tree houses a little bit better. Um, we've been able to fend off most of the halflings, but they are trying to siege us. Um, 
but we know the woods way better than them, so we have an advantage. Um, but there always there always seems to be a presence, especially as soon as you leave the woods. Um, I would like to recommend we Bijou were talking and I were talking earlier about the uh, the wiser elves at Moon Lake uh, in the Moon Lake Tower, and um, I've I have had many dealings with them in my time, and our my leaders and my elders have dealt with them very closely. Uh, I think if there's anyone who has an idea for what the next steps would be or what, how we can interpret the prophecy anymore, it would probably be them. Uh, so if there's any way we can maybe assemble some sort of army from everyone here from their your respective countries, maybe we can go and try and liberate Moon Lake um, and talk to and and have more access to the history and knowledge there. Yeah, I think that's a good start. I do Geron want to... speaks up and says, I can, I can definitely provide soldiers and, and uh, from, from Soft Hill. Obviously not our entire army because we are working on defending, but I can provide some small amount of forces. And uh, Admas says, oh, definitely we can... We can wait a little bit for the dwarves from the north to come down. We can definitely help out there, unless anyone has a faster way to get all the way down here from the north. It's quite a journey. Mm. Belberg says, "Yeah, I, I'm sure that we can get some of our some of our folks to help out as well." Um, and Quilly, of course, says, "And and definitely we can get wood elves to help." So, uh, looks like we maybe have. A semi-sizable force that we can assemble. I would like to make two recommendations in addition to the main effort of liberating Moon Lake. I do think it is, it is essential that Byung-Ho's people uh, get food. And uh, Roman's people are rescued from the desert. And brought to a safe place. And I think if we could send supplies from one of the more well-off... I think, Admis, you were talking about how well everyone is doing. Would you have any food to spare for Byung-Ho's people? Oh, definitely. We can we can transfer some food down to to Eastwood. That shouldn't be a problem at all. I'll talk to my uncle. And as it would probably be a stealth mission, um, Queely, maybe could you and I get together and maybe get some of our sneakier spies to try to do a recovery mission in the desert to find the, the rest of the gnomes that are still alive? Yes, um, I can definitely get some of my crew, uh, my more agile crew on that. Um, and uh, maybe your, maybe some of your, your spies as well can help out and we yeah. can make a little strike force. Yeah. I'll need a few of my spies to go with me to Moon Lake, but you can have the rest. And maybe Roman can direct you. Okay. Sounds, sounds like a plan to me. All right, well, um, where would be a good place to assemble all of these armies without being detected? It'd have to be far away from a main city, I think. Quilly speaks up and says, do you think that maybe we could, Harry could help us transfer people back and forth? He probably would when he comes back. We can definitely raise that question. Um, but as far as like where we stage the forces so that they're not detected by the other army. Well, we could always... Um, I know that this is, this is one of his bases through the trees. Mm -hmm. um, if, he has a, if he has a tree set up in, in Moon Lake... That would be a great kind of surprise attack because I don't think they're aware of the tree network. 
Mm -hmm. So we could shuttle we could, people we, right we through. We can't fit... Oh, I see what you're saying. Is it is it too meta to say that there's like 10 trees in the Moon Lake Forest? I mean... I'm just saying like yeah. we're covered. I mean, you, you okay. can come back from... <laughs> like you, you can come back from your walk whenever you're ready. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> this is it's a lot of people in a small place and yeah so then maybe we can start here and then go off or perhaps even if we are able to assemble once if if let me let me get some some information on touring and on the gnome country and see if it's very populated with the halflings if if our strike force may not be big enough because if we need more people we can all just assemble there and then once we liberate it we can tra travel to moon lake potentially that would be fine i think i think the idea with touring was that Roman said there are not very many gnomes left. And so if we liberate it, who would hold it? That's true. So I think if we go first to Moon Lake, which is where the bulk of the army is needed for that action, then when we're done, then we can go to touring. Potentially, but... I don't want to delay trying to rescue people. Hmm. Very well. So I'll get on that first, and then perhaps we can reassemble here once we are able to save any survivors that we can. Yeah. How are we doing on supplies, like, for the soldiers and stuff? Uh, like, what? what's the uh, the weapon... Um, situation looking like the armor weapons situation food for the for just our our group right now um well Abnus speaks up he said well i've got my trusty weapons right here <laughs> and uh everyone kind of nods and says yeah we have all of our own um and Abnus and Jaron kind of look at each other and say well our armies are armed that's why we call them armies um Armed armies. Oh, I thought, it meant, I thought it was because they had um, like <laughs> little armies coming out their sleeves. Aww. This guy's well, got four where armies. Keep, where do you think they keep their hidden weapons? Up their sleeves. Oh, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, would I would worry, Jaren speaks up, because I would be concerned to some degree if we were going to use this as a base, just um, thinking about food and... and um, I'm, I'm, I realize we have quite a few beds and lodging here, um, but having armies is a lot of mouths to feed. So that might be something we need to add some funds to, uh, maybe to, um, help with, with, um, Dirk feeding everyone who comes through here. All right. Well, I, I can, uh, I can give 35,000 gold pieces to, to that cause if needed. John spits out his drink. <laughs> he was drinking it. <laughs> Where are you getting this kind of money? Are you uh, back to your criminal ways again, brother? No, 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 no. Not at all. We, we, uh, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we found a dragon and it was hoarding gold. And I saw the money and I, I mean, a wave of temptation stroke swept over me, but I resisted and, I have it here, and I'm ready to, to donate it to a good cause. Mm. Dragons, huh? Sure. <laughs> if you don't believe me, you, you ask Harry. He has it. Why don't you zone of truth this place and prove it? Whoa. I don't have that <laughs> spell currently learned. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not have your trademark spell? I, yeah. I, I replaced it with something to help you guys out. <laughs> Oh, I'm pulling the guilty card here. <laughs> I also have another question with regard to supplies. Uh, do any of you have um, 
experienced clerics in your in your towns. I, I was thinking if we have a tree at Moon Lake and there are people who are severely injured, we could always rush them back here to the Rusty Spike and it could be sort of like a hospital since we have all these beds. Duran speaks up and says, I've actually trained in clerisy um, before I took over from my father, so um, I can help out and, and bring some of my network of clerics from Soft Hill. That'd be wonderful. And you, and you could just have one of them posted at the tree, one or two that know, know how to travel through it who can sort of open the door for people to get through to the hospital. Very good. Very well. Um, Belbrix comes up and kind of pulls at the sleeve of, of Bijou. Um, says, if you guys are kind of wrapping up, can I, can I talk to you outside for a second? Sure. I mean, let's, let's take a break. Let's take like maybe take a five, 10 minute. Maybe Harry will come back to give us some, answers who knows um yeah so i'll once everybody kind of gets up and stretches and stuff i'll go i'll go into like a, a back room with bell bricks all right what's up um she actually leads you out to the um like the patio outside it's a very it's a very nice night out here um and you see the sun's going down and um uh, a full moon is shining in the sky. Can I have my foot still in the door? Mm hmm. Because this feels weird to me. Yeah. And um, this feels not good to me. So I'm actually going to be like kind of what I do when I'm, when I'm teaching in my classroom to where I basically have the door still kind of open and my back is right on like that dividing line between inside and outside. Mm hmm. So where she's outside and can speak confidentially, but I'm still seen by people in the room. Yeah. And I'm going to, um, as we're walking to the door, I'm just going to, can I can I do like a private message that's just intended for one person? It would go to all of everyone with the It would go to all matches. of them. Yeah. I'm going to try, I'm going to get Reeve's attention just so that he sees where I'm going. Okay. So just nod to Reeve. And once I get eye contact, like I'm right out here. And then yeah. you can see my shoulder in the doorway. Okay. I, I nod, yeah. looking, watching her out of the corner of my eye. Um, Belbrick's kind of just like, sorry, I'm just not used to being around that many people kind of looking at me and putting that much pressure on me. It's kind of... Just like to get out and get some fresh air once in a while. Um, listen, you're really cool and and confident, and I just feel really out of place here. And I just wanted to know if you had any like anything that I can can do that would help me. I, I I'm really nervous around all these people, and you just seem so confident and cool. And I want to be more like you. Oh. Okay. Well. You all hear from your buttons, your tree buttons, a little bloop, bloop. And then Harry's voice comes through. Uh, <clears throat> hello? Hello? That's two words. Oh, I forgot we had words. Um, yeah, eight more. Oh, <laughs> you reminded me of this. Let me, hold on. You've got two more words. Eight more. Uh, <laughs> hello, hello. This is probably Harry's first time using it, so he may not it, even it really realize is. there's ten word limit. Yeah, like is it ten um, words per day? Yeah, it's it's per three use. times a day. Three times you can okay. use it three times a day. Okay, that's right. Stay indoors. Bar the doors. Oh, um, I'm gonna yank uh, bell bricks inside and lock the door, and. I'm gonna see if Dirk is doing anything. And I grab a chair. I'm gonna and I prop it up against the. Sorry. No, go for it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wedge it against the doors. I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna call out to uh, anybody in in my vicinity to grab a door, grab a chair, and wedge it in the door. Don't don't let these doors open. Um, Dirk was already kind of like not hammering in on a window like a plywood board. He's like. 
How many doors do you think we have? We got way more chairs than doors. I'm going to send a couple people down to, to the cellar. Yeah. Because I know that that's a vulnerable place of entry. Did Gruck <laughs> come back? As I've exploited it. <laughs> Rumor has it. Oh, yeah. is Gruck back? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right when Dirk started hammering up that one door, it Gruck bursts it open, pushes it aside, says, <laughs> Gruck got rope. And he, he brings in um, a rope that has like a, um, like it's really, really long. Like, like it's wrapped around him and like all that. It's probably like 200 feet. Of rope. Um, and at the end of it, there's like, like a door that was tied to a rope. Like, it looks like it was just ripped off from its door frame. He's like, Gruck, find rope. And he's dragging it in. Uh, over the little button, I'm going to mm-hmm. say, uh, where are you? <laughs> are you safe? Weather or armies? <laughs> or clouds or armies? I won't respond. Okay. Um, dang, I hate that all seven of them are here, and if this Look, place goes down. I, I'm that's trying it. to help you. Stay indoors. <laughs> like. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. All right. And we're going to end this episode here and we'll talk to y'all next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Later. Hopefully, not the last time I see that. <laughs>